This video is sponsored by Audible. Sometimes I speak so fast that the words just all seem to blend into one noise. Which on the topic of noises, that was a really strange way of saying the word noise. Although noise is now stopping sounding like a word. Look, let's just quickly move on. Welcome back to another episode on the Hermitcraft server. In the previous episode, we built up this little base right here. Thanks to Iskal challenging me in Hermit Challenges to get gooder. To get gooder. It's a, it's a horrible thing to have to say. Every single... Neuron in my brain is telling me to not say that sentence because it's just it's a grammatical nightmare Anyway, this place is looking rather lovely But there is one detail that we didn't finish up in the previous episode and that of course is the super smelter Now we do actually have space for this thing out the back here So I'm just gonna shoot straight through build up all the redstone and get this thing functional So this is how many furnaces we're going to have in our design 22 in total Which is quite the step up from the five that I currently have in my hobbit hole I genuinely hadn't realized that this was a shop until today it sells quartz and that's incredible to be helpful. So I seem to be surrounded by phantoms. I've built a decent number of these in my time and yet I still seem to be really struggling with this. I I can't work out where I'm going wrong but something's already wrong and I've only got like 20% of it. Thankfully I have managed to sort myself out and now we're on the home straight. I'm doing the last part of the redstone circuitry but I mean, I, I haven't followed my own golden rule here. When building redstone contraptions, always clear out much more space than you need, all right? Because I, I'm building I'm building this super smelter with no blocks around it. I cleared out exactly the amount of space that I needed, really, and it's just been a nightmare. I keep getting stuck. I keep not being able to do things. It's taken four times as long. Just, just put the time in at the start to clear it out. And now that it's constructed, I believe all of the hoppers are so filled with junk because I've rebuilt it so many times that actually I'm going to have to clear out this entire thing and then look through all the hoppers to make sure, yeah, that uh, they're all empty. That's the only thing that I don't like about this design is that some of the hoppers aren't actually accessible once it's finished. The good news is I've just put a bunch of coal in and that all seems to be working quite nicely. So now I'm going to try out actually putting items into smelt. And that is, is quite a bold amount of items that I've just put into there. So if this doesn't work, we're, <laughs> we're going to be in trouble. Um, but let's see, hopefully, fingers crossed, all of these furnaces turn on at once. That is the sign of it working properly. That is correct. That is correct. And look, we should see that this gets refreshed as soon as the furnace finishes smelting the item, which means that if we look in this end hopper right here, we take out all the junk and things. Look how fast this thing is smelting stuff. This is so much better. This is so much better than what I've been dealing with. Why do I not? I should build this first day. As soon as I have enough resources to build one, I should build this because... It just doesn't get any better than that. Anyway, let's connect up our output chest. This is perfect. This is perfect. Chuff to bits. We definitely need to put more labels in this place, though. In fact, we need to put more labels on everything. This whole place needs to be organized a little bit more because right now it's a bit blank. I tell you what, if there is a shop in the shopping district that sells leather-based things, leather on its own, I'll take item frames, all right? If there's anything like that, they will get all my diamonds. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> because it's, it's the one thing that I just never have. That and ink sacks. Ink sacks is another one. Now, because I didn't fancy massacring the only remaining cows on the Hermitcraft server, I went through and just placed in a bunch of signs. So now this place is fully sorted and I know where everything should end up. Looks good, looks good. That's my junk wall. And then I have everything else over here. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully I can be really organized and really smart and actually stick to this as opposed to just completely chucking stuff everywhere. Anyway, with the base all finished, it is now time to move on to the next and most important project of today's video. This is an idea that's been with me for ages. I wanted to do this since before Hermitcraft Season 7, but just the timing didn't seem quite right. And that is the concept of the button. For anyone who was on Reddit in... God, I don't even know when it was. April of 2015, apparently. You'll probably remember it. And if you weren't there, then I will explain it all in a second. First, I've got to design all the redstone so that I actually know what I'm building on the Hermitcraft server. It's it's going to be a massive challenge. This is <laughs> this is actually going to be quite difficult. And while I go through that mental hardship, uh, it's time for a message from our sponsor. I know this sounds crazy, but I would say that the Hermitcraft series is powered by Audible because every single Hermitcraft episode has an audiobook behind it. This is me listening to Audible while mining sand. This is me listening to Audible in the Minecraft version of my studio. And this is me listening to Audible in the real life version of my studio. Listening to Audible while trying to think of ideas, while training jujitsu with Kubo, and... 
Well, you don't need to see that. So you get the picture. The audiobook that I'm currently listening to is So You've Been Publicly Shamed by John Ronson. It's narrated by him as well, and it's all about people whose lives have been ruined by stupid jokes that they've told on the internet. It's it's really, really interesting. But of course, there's many thousands of audiobooks on Audible, so I thought I'd pick out a few for my hermit friends. B00 got Doctor Sleep. Scar got How to Start a Landscaping Business Right Now with No Startup Money. Iskal got The Minecraft Guide for Beginners. I feel like he could use that. Let me know down in the comment section your audiobook suggestions for other members of the Hermitcraft server. But anyway, if you do want to sign up to Audible, head over to audible.com forward slash mumbo or text mumbo to 500 500. That is intense. Anyone who just skipped that missed me doing jujitsu with Kubo, your loss. And while you guys have been listening to me ramble on about audiobooks, I've been hard at work in my Redstone testing world coming up with this Redstone contraption. This is all of the Redstone engineering behind the button system. And now I guess I have a little bit of explaining to do. The button is a game. Some would call it a social experiment where you have a button and a countdown timer. That is it. When you press the button, it resets the countdown timer and then the countdown timer starts ticking downwards. And eventually the timer will run out and the button will die forever. Now you can see underneath the countdown timer, I have a few different colors right here. And these are the different tiers that you end up in depending on when you press the button. So say for example, the countdown timer is somewhere out about here. All of these redstone lamps are lit up and it's well and truly in the purple zone. If you hit the button, you haven't really saved the button's life too much. So you get a bit of a rubbish tier. Blue tier, you're getting better. Green tier, you've done a pretty good job. You know, it was at half health, so you've, you've replenished it. But when you start getting into these tiers and especially this tier, then, well, you really are something special, okay? Because you are essentially the one who has saved the button's life. It was on its last legs, okay? On its last legs, you have, you've brought it back from the brink, and that means that you get a special red level. Do you get anything valuable for being a red level? No, but if I hit the button here, obviously you'll see that the levels, the redstone lamps, will start switching back on, and also I will get myself a red piece of concrete from this dropper right here. And this entitles me to a red belt, which looks a little bit like this. And the important thing about this belt is that obviously now all of the hermits can see that I am a top tier absolute god of the server and everyone should bow down to me. Now it's important to note that you don't just get a belt when you hit the button in the red tier, you get a belt whenever you hit the button. Okay, so say for example, it's in the purple zone. If you hit the button when it's in the purple zone, you're going to get yourself a purple piece of concrete and you're gonna have to wear your purple belt. And it's gonna be really embarrassing Everyone's gonna laugh at you on the server. Nobody wants a purple belt, but you're gonna have to keep that purple belt on until you save the button again when it's in a slightly higher danger zone. So although there's no specific reward for saving the button when it's in its highest tier, there's definitely a social hierarchy here. You know, this is embarrassing, still pretty embarrassing. Okay, you're getting better, all right? You're not too, not too bad. You're pretty cool, very cool, insane god of the server. I hope that makes sense. Now, before I return onto the server, I'm gonna have to remove my red belt because if anyone is caught faking a belt, I am gonna be angry. My chest feels incredibly bare right now. I need to get another belt back on it quickly. Anyway, in terms of where I'm actually going to build this thing, uh, it's actually going to be constructed in the nether. This seems like the perfect place to construct something like this because obviously there's going to be plenty of people walking past it and the entire system was designed to fit within a 16 by 16 area. So that means it should, it should all slot within this chunk right here that is right opposite the shopping district. The reason I haven't constructed it in the spawn chunks is because I don't want this thing to die just because there's no one on the server. That seems rough. Anyway, of course, this system requires a whole ton of redstone resources. So not only am I going to need all of the bits in my redstone choker box, but I'm also probably going to need... Yeah, I'm definitely going to need a little bit more than that, aren't I? I guess we'll kind of cross that bridge when it comes to it. I'll pick up resources as I go along. But anyway, first things first, need to build up the system that is going to allow the reset of the items inside this thing. And that involves a whole bunch of comparator pulse extenders and various bits and pieces like that. So if I hit this button, that is good. Okay, that redstone torch should stay off for a decent length of time. That will allow all of our counter to actually refill. Even if you've saved it right at the end, it then needs to refill everything that was stored up in the system. Essentially, that redstone torch allows the counter to go back up to the top. Goodness me, it really does stay on for a long time though, doesn't it? <laughs>
<laughs> it almost feels like something's gone wrong, but it hasn't. I've done all the redstone correct. Yeah, there we go. A big thank you to Mr. XP Crafted for adding redstone lamps into his redstone shop. How much are they? One diamond for 16? That's not even a bad deal. I'm happy with that. And I think I'm going to be going there a lot today because I've just run out of redstone repeaters and I'm on my way out of redstone comparators right now, but things are going well. I've got the actual counting system all in place and now I'm building up the red coder so that the machine knows what level this counter is currently at. I do understand that for those of you who have no idea about redstone, uh, all of this sounds completely mythical, but trust me, it's it's all good. Exuma has popped by and he's, he's checking out what I'm doing. He looks... Uh... <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, he looks a little bit confused. <laughs> Progress is coming along nicely. We are now getting the little dropper system, which is going to drop out the colored concrete that corresponds to your rank. So that is, that's quite a big deal. Now this next part is incredibly important, which is the actual redstone clock, which is going to be governing this thing. So this is what's going to be holding the time. And this is what's going to let the system know how quickly to discharge the timer. Now I'm hoping I can absolutely nail this first time and this timer doesn't require any adjustment once the system is built. But obviously if I actually construct it and it stays purple forever or is constantly almost dying, <laughs> then I might have to make some slight, slight adjustments to the timings. I think I've just placed in the final block without really realizing it. I'm looking around. I don't think there's anything else that I need to do. Redstone clocks, got the ratchet system. I've got all of the dropper systems, the red coder. I have the hopper cycle. Got the pulse extenders down. At the I think this thing's done. <laughs> Out of nowhere, it's now finished. Well, that was surprisingly stress-free. I think we can all agree. So let's now actually start filling in all of the items. So my item of choice is going to be iron shovels. That's what's going to be fueling this entire thing. The only other item that needs to make its way into there is all of the different colors of concrete going into the droppers back there. But I think I'll do that in a second. First, I actually want to make this thing look pretty because this is... It's a bit of a monstrosity. I'm a little bit embarrassed of it. Uh, people are going to be walking past and just being like, what is this disgusting mess? So I guess we should probably make it look a little bit cooler. And I do have quite a nice idea of how I'm going to do that. It just requires a lot of grey concrete. <laughs> I've received, I've received, I've received another move. Uh, I think, I think we all know that this is going to end up in a tie, isn't it? Because I'm going to put mine here. And then if he puts his there, which he's definitely going to do, yeah, we're, we're going to tie. This is the worst game of Norse Crosses ever. We need to come up with a new game to send back and forth. Let me know down in the comment section your suggestions. Oh dear, I've just realised I came all the way over here to my, my dye farm, and then I remembered that my dye farm's actually been replaced by this guy. He is handsome though. Oh dear. Oh no. Oh no, I kind of needed that. I've sent some frantic messages to Exuma Void and he is now restocking his store. Very much appreciate that. It already looks quite ominous. I've done the first layer <laughs> and I've wrapped around the redstone lamps and already it looks quite ominous, which is kind of what I'm going for because this is meant to be a, a sort of strange system. We've never really had anything like this on the Hermitcraft server before. So it should look like something from a different planet. And it definitely feels like that. I think the red sky is also helping quite a bit. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, yes. I'm so glad. I'm so glad that this idea has worked out in terms of how it looks. I can't wait to get all the different colours in. First we need to get the base build finished though, because this is like a facade. It's like one of those Hollywood houses, you know, it's just it's just the front. There's nothing at the back. This is definitely making things better. This is definitely making things better. Almost it's a little bit churchy in a way. And that's gonna get even worse when I start adding in colours too. Finally, my gravel supplies are completely out. So I've had to pop over to Green's store and his gravel supplies are also completely out. So this is as much as I've got. Thankfully, I was able to find a few stacks lying around it in these chests over here. So now the actual build itself is all completed and I managed to gather up all of the dice so we can put all the colors in and that will be, that will be the full button build all finished. Now, one thing that I have realized as I've just stepped back is that this thing is not spawn proof. So we could, we could run into some issues with some ghasts and things. I guess I should go and grab some carpet and place it on top of all the surfaces and things. But this is the build <laughs> itself. And it looks really, really cool. Once you see it as a cyclops, okay, you then can't unsee it as being a cyclops. That's the one thing that I've found with it. <laughs> but outside of that, uh, it's a it's a wicked looking build. This is seriously seriously cool. 
looks totally from a different planet, which is exactly what I was planning. It definitely looks like something that other players will be curious about. I look forward to chatting to the other players to explain to them how this whole thing works. And I look forward to seeing how long this thing can survive for, because to be honest with you, I genuinely have no idea. I like to think that it will survive like a good couple of weeks. That's kind of, that's the goal. But who knows, it could die, it could die within a couple days. So what I'm going to do to try and prevent this is I'm going to do a quick experimental phase. This is going to last for just a couple of days and I'm going to see, make a rough gauge of how long the timer should be, make my adjustments and everything like that. Then it's going to be open to the public, open to the members of the Hermitcraft server, most likely this weekend. And this message goes specifically out to Grian. Okay, I know how tempting these signs are for you, buddy. Alright? <laughs> this these signs are like kryptonite to Grian. I know he's gonna walk straight past them and think all he wants to do, every fibre in his being is going to want to press that button. Okay? Please don't. Because it will totally ruin my experiment, and I'll be very, very sad, and I won't continue my game of noughts and crosses. Just as a quick bit of behind-the-scenes action for the YouTube creation process, uh, I want to get a thumbnail of this build, and that pigment was there, but now he's despawned, there's just this little dude in the corner, just, please, just get out the frame, so I can get a nice, clean, clean thumbnail. Come on, dude, just do it for me. Here we see a zombie Cleo, correctly following the rules of the button game. She is a good hermit. Can you tell that I've played a lot of Minecraft today? I'm going slightly, slightly crazy. Which means I think it's the perfect time for some hermit challenges, don't you? Let's meet up with this gal in the hermit challenges area. Dude, this looks ridiculous. Where, where are you though? I'm up in the tree, obviously. Oh, oh of course. <laughs> <laughs> I genuinely couldn't see you. This oh, looks, funny. this looks insane, dude. I mean, when I said improve the Hermit Challenges area, I meant like just clear out some of the bushes, maybe like do some lawn mowing a little bit, like improve the, the fences around the edges just a tiny bit. Not this. I'm glad you like it because I have been, I've been seriously, <laughs> seriously stressing out whether or not you will like it. Are you joking? How could I not like this? Look, my face, I mean, it is my old face, okay, but I can't I can't blame you too much there. Oh yeah, my... you're not Bumble Baggins anymore. No, that unfortunately was part Thank of- Thank goodness. <laughs> what do you mean? Hang on, you're the second well, I, person I that like said that. I've... I feel like I should, I feel like I, now is the time to tell you that I never did like that shirt you were wearing. It looked like a monster's face. Oh my goodness, well, so, so, I go up to Grian, right, and I tell him I'm no longer a hobbit, and he just informs me, actually, he hasn't been a hobbit for ages, so I broke that news to him, thinking he was going to be upset that he was the only hobbit, and it turns out I had just been the only <laughs> hobbit the whole time, and then, yep. and, and then you tell me that you didn't even like Bumbo Baggins anyway, <laughs> I mean, I feel like I've really, I've really you, missed the mark. <laughs> you, you, you've upped your whole beingness of hobbiness. <laughs> it's awful. I feel terrible. Well, this looks absolutely amazing, dude. I love the counter as well. Is that is that like a... What is that? Is that the yeah, hermit so, challenge? So, okay. what's, what's going on here? Yes, yeah, so whenever we complete the challenge, you yep. know how we used to ring the bell? Yep. Well, now I've automated that with a button. So now when we complete a challenge... So, first of all, are yep. you? do you feel like I've completed my challenge? I, 100%. I mean, you, yeah, you couldn't have done better. I'm actually... I'm smiling from ear to ear. I can't believe... I can't believe how far you took this challenge. <laughs> this is fantastic. This well, thank is goodness really, really for cool. that. Thank goodness for that, because I have been nervous. Okay, so I complete my challenge, so I get to press the button. Check this yep. out. Yep. Press it. Boom. Oh, nice. So actually, it counts It counts how many challenges have been completed then. So, I mean, yes. I, I don't know if you know, obviously, with me not being Bumbo Baggins anymore, I've actually moved out of my, my Hobbit hole, and I've built what is actually a painted design by you, which is a base in between bases, or a base between I bases. <laughs> an IBBB? Yes, an IBBB. In between bases base? <laughs> yeah, that's nice. exactly it. So I've, I've, I would say that counts as getting gooder. I would, that's, that's not just getting gooder. That's getting Omega. So you're saying I haven't completed the challenge then? You haven't completed... The, no, I'm, I'm just <laughs> kidding. That is a good... That is a great completion. Fantastic. Boom. And it's straight up on the board. So it's straight up on the board. And the idea is whenever we have, it's 27 challenges, it's going to count. Right, okay. And whenever we have completed 27 challenges, that will be maxed out. And at that time, Hermit Challenges, initiation. Man, Temple. you are starting to understand Yay. how this whole thing works. I figured you'd like, uh, you would appreciate the yep. randomness of having 15 lamps yep. equal to 27 challenges. 
Yeah, I must admit, my brain did like a little bit of of maths there, and I was like, I don't know if that looks like 15, I don't know, or 27, I don't know if that looks like 27, but, you know, I don't want to question him on it, because... I, you oh, know, I, I know he's really pleased with his new build that he's just done. <laughs> and for Maybe once, challenges. I want to try not to just blast you for <laughs> once, just for one day. I did good in blasting myself then, yes. I guess. But I, I, I appreciate the hermit challenginess of the fact that, yeah, 27 somehow is dividing into 15 there. So I guess we won't know when a redstone lamp is going to turn on. Is there some level nope. of randomness involved? Nope. Fantastic. Yeah. No, but, yeah. Hermit, hermit, hermit <laughs> challenges. Anyway, I'm, I'm off. So uh, yeah, we've sort of see you, see you later, dude. I see you later. <laughs> well, that was weird. So there we go. That is today's episode on the Hermitcraft server. We did some work on the little base that we have down here, the IBBB, whatever Iskal calls it. And also, we did some work on the button game, which definitely, I can't wait to get that started. That's going to be so much fun. I can't wait to see how long it survives. I can't wait to see who falls into what rank. And actually, I was talking to Iscal about the belt system, and he came up with a ridiculously cool idea. He wants to be able to customize his belt. He wants to be able to wear headbands and things. And I just want to say, I fully, fully endorse that. If Hermes want to customize their belts or wear their belts on their foreheads, they totally can. And also, it got me thinking, if any artists are watching this video right now and you think you can do a much better job at designing belts than me, which is definitely likely, okay, please do shoot over your suggestions via email or via Twitter. I'd love to see your work. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll catch you in the next one. See ya. That was a ton of fun. I've seriously enjoyed that this might be one of my favorite Hermitcraft episodes because it married building, some silliness, a little bit of functional stuff. We're working on the base, a little bit of redstone action. Obviously, a lot of redstone action, in fact. I had to work really hard on designing up that redstone creation so that it will work properly. Some play testing. Oh, it doesn't get better for me.